This is my daughter. She was so adorable when she was born. When she was two, she was all about pianos. So everywhere we went, she wanted to play one when she, she saw one. When she got five, she forgot about pianos. She was all about makeup and lipsticks. It was hilarious. Then later, she was all about horses. And now I have two daughters. And the stories continue. And so this is how I like to think about my photographs. I capture my experiences, my memories. My photos tell a story. Yes, all 35,000 of them. <laughs> Except that they don't really. What they actually are are 35,000 thumbnails on my hard drive, in my camera roll. And you guys probably have the same uh, story, right? What we all have, it's just a digital version of the shoebox our parents had. But in our case, it's a ginormous box. So I'm a computer vision researcher, and I wanted to see if the technology that I'm developing to model people from big photo and video collections can be useful to create stories from my own photographs. And so I had the following idea. I said, OK, so I have this huge photo collection. I'm going to detect the faces in all my photos now, automatically, of course. I'm going to recognize all the faces then, and I'm going to focus on a single person, let's say my daughter. And then what I'll do, I'll, I'm going to create a huge graph out of all these photographs, where each photo is represented by a node in this graph, and the edges represent similarities between each pair of photographs, similarities in terms of the facial expression, and if she smiles or not, in terms of the hairstyle, the head pose, the time when the photo was taken. And then once I have this graph established, I can teach a computer to walk on this graph, to create a path, or if you will, a story. So this was awesome. And I thought, OK, so I've got the path now. I can do it auto automatically. The only thing that is missing is how to represent this set of photographs. And so I realized that before the story part, that if I'll just take the detected faces and I put them one on top of the other and play them chronologically, it's, it's kind of magical. So she, I can see how she grows in front of my eyes. And what happens, though, is that there's lots of things. While it's a cool experience, there's lots of things going on, right? And, so, and it's very long. And so the combination of the story, the big graph is a path, plus the video representation creates magic. We can even summarize 20 years of photographs in 30 seconds. So let's watch together the final result. What you will notice is that the person is in the focus. The transitions between the different photographs in the final video are really nice. You can see that it's really um, transitioned smoothly between the facial expressions and the time and so on. And it tells a story. Thank you. So this is fun. I was able to teach a computer to tell a story from my existing photographs. Now, the next question that I asked, I thought, wow, this is kind of cool. So can I actually teach a computer to simulate what my daughter will look like? She's now nine. What will she look like when she's 25? This seems really hard, though. How would I, how would I go about it? So. I thought one idea, right? So if I do have a pair of photographs of the same person, these are two real photos in different ages, then if I have this transition already, I can teach a computer to how to learn these transitions. But I want to do it for any identity, for any person out there in the world. 
So what I really need is to be able to um, uh, somehow estimate the average transformation across all people in the world, average aging transformation, to be able to simulate later. So, but to get the average transformation, I need, I need a representation of all the people in the world. So I had the following idea. If I go to a search engine and just look for babies, I get lots of photos of babies, right? Here's an example. And then if I use the same technique as in the video representation, I, put all the, I detect all the faces and I put them one on top of the other, but instead of showing them as a video, I will average them per pixel, I will get the following result. So I get an average baby. And look, this is not a real photo of a baby. This is an average baby from the search results. I can do it for any age, so I can search for a 25-year-old male, and I get a ton of photos, and then average them again, and I get a 25-year-old average male. So I thought, okay, cool, this is my solution, and so now I have two photographs, if you will, not real, but, you know, and I can teach a computer to estimate the average aging transformation. Now, the final step is that we want to apply this average transformation on any photo out there, even a photo of a three-year-old uh, boy here. And so the, another component that uh, we developed is that we can apply the average transformation on this photo, but we need to make sure that we keep the identity uh, of the person. And so we did that, and we were able to produce from a three-year-old photo of this boy, let's say a 25-year-old version of him. <laughs> We can even produce an 80-year-old version of him. So you'll notice that somehow the face changes, you see the skin changes, the nose shape changed, and so on. And all those are real aging uh, changes. You will notice one thing, the milk mustache state <laughs> at 80-year-old. This is because the algorithm thinks that it's part of his identity. <laughs> we can do it for any type of photographs, any quality of photographs. Here's one example any color, um, uh, females and males, of course. And we also tested it with ground truth. Is it, is it uh, close to reality or not? So we had a photograph um, of, uh, of one person where we had him at age three, and we also had him in like real photographs in diff different other ages, six, 10, and 16. And then we applied our algorithm on the three-year-old photo of him, just on the face area. So we created a synthesized face and blended it into the head of the real photos, and we got this. We did a human study, and people had a really hard time to decide which one is real, which one is not. So that was promising. So I talked about how will I look like in the future, but you know, some of you may ask other questions that are related to our appearance and photographs and how we look and how we may look. So, I don't know, some of you may ask, what if I exercise more? Will I look differently? Do I look good in hats? Yeah? What if I become vegetarian? Right? Will I look differently? Maybe not. So I wanted to ask, will black hair fit me? Okay? And so we all know, it is well known, that when people change their hairstyles or the hair color, they can even become unrecognizable. It's pretty dramatic for our appearance. And sometimes, research even showed that Sometimes the face is less important than the hair, actually, because we have sometimes unique hairstyles, and this is how people recognize us. And so it's scary to make a big change without knowing if it is going to look nice or not. And so I took a photo of me, and I wanted to answer this question. And so, of course, I taught a computer to do it. And so I rendered myself <laughs> with black hair, started to, to write code to create that automatically, and that looked fun, so I said, okay, so let's try to render myself with different hairstyles and black hair. So I got this. And then I said, and then I started showing it to people, and people were excited, and it's like, oh yeah, that's so cool. Um, and so I rendered myself with curly hair uh, and different colors. And in fact, I started to develop it, and I built it as a search engine, where you could type there anything, kind of imagine an image search engine, so I could type there India. 
and imagine myself in India. So I could see how I look like in Indian clothing and hair and so on. Or even go back in time, and I could write 1930 and see how I would look like in 1930s. I tried it on 80 different queries, so I could see myself with dreadlocks and with the different hair colors and styles and with shaved head and as a bride and in different traditional clothing. It was a lot of fun. There are many important applications to the technology that we're developing in modeling people from photos and videos. I will talk only about one, which is really close to my heart. There are half a million missing children out there. Just in 2016, just in the USA, there are similar numbers in other countries. These numbers are insane. It turns out that a critical component in the search for missing children are portraits of how they may look like in the future. Sometimes people go missing for many, many years. For example, in this example, this woman is missing since 1963. And what you see on the right is a sketch that an artist is make, uh, made to try to predict how she looks like to be able to find her. Or here's another example. Sometimes artists do photoshops and try to predict an age progression, how, um, uh, so for example, in this case, but who knows if she's still blonde or if she actually looks like this. This is based on intuitions of artists. It's also very hard to do it for half a million photos because it's just manual work in Photoshop. And so we wanted to combine the two projects, one where you imagine how a, a face of a person looks like in the future, and the other one is how to imagine uh, it combined with a, like a full portrait of the person. And so here's an example uh, where we take a baby photo and in the search engine we search for a five-year-old male and we combine, we edge progress the face and then create also different hairstyles to try to imagine what if somebody uh, changed the color of the hair of this person or how uh, he will look like with different clothing. We can imagine how she, he looks like in, uh, uh, as a 20-year-old male, as a 30-year-old male, several examples, or even as a 65-year-old male. I would like to finish with saying that computer vision allows us to see ourselves in new light. There are many fun and important applications, and I'm so excited about the impact that it's having and will have in the future. Thank you.